Come with us on a journey into the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. We will test your senses and challenge your beliefs. A world where science and religion clash. Or do they? You will meet real people and hear real stories, but you will not believe. You will witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving to all our good <laughs> friends in Canada. I am Ron Kolick, your host, the gatekeeper of the realm of the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable New England's own Van Helsing. With me, of course, is the professor, Mr. Lou Balazzi. I was wondering what the opening was going to be today. And <laughs> our special, special guest is uh uh god really? Really? god yeah i don't know how to introduce you i was I mean, you told me not to use queen of pain anymore so uh, yeah whatever I mean, my husband used it the other night when so, we were at a, an event yeah. aren't you the queen of pain isn't that what ron called you <laughs> so, anyways, well, i'm glad that was the context i know <laughs> a long time uh long time partner of mine and uh, the queen of pain Maureen Wood. yep there you go so yes it is uh canadian thanksgiving God bless him. Yeah. All right. And you might ask, what is Canadian Thanksgiving? Yeah. Did the Indians like pick a different day with the Canadians or? So here you go. You, uh, here we go. Official, uh, get it to get up here because I've moved it. Uh, between turkey dinners and family reunions, uh, Canadian Thanksgiving falls on a Monday. That's pretty much the same as our U.S. counterpart. Uh, no. Except for as is a uh, Thursday. It's on a Thursday. So how was it the same? Pretty much. They eat the same didn't thing. You, didn't you miss the pretty much part? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's licensed to say anything you want at that. Point. Though <laughs> Canada does not have a first Thanksgiving story, analogous, analogous, yeah, same as the U.S. Analogous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It involves a pirate and explorer. Ooh. Martin Fro Frobersher. He gave thanks in 1578 for a safe journey, and uh, that was good. That's what I was going to say, for making it in one piece? Yeah, probably. <laughs> he was a pirate? <laughs> yeah, pirate. And so he had explorer. a little dinner when he came back? and Yeah, a little dinner or whatever. Thanks for the raping and pillaging? Exactly. In the, in the wake of the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, like that's never been done before. No. Yeah. <laughs> like in every freaking country, in every freaking period of history. No, again, it's just an interesting context. Yeah. In the wake of a uh, crisis of our faith, catalyzed by Charles Darwin's On the or Origin of uh, Species, the Canadian Protestant min ministers began in 1859 to petition the colonial government for an official day to thank God, pointing out for the bountiful harvests, 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 Harvest. As proof that God exists, uh, says historian Peter Stevens. Over the next decade, decade, they found a reason to be even more grateful. They were spared the bloodshed of the U.S. Civil War. Uh, the Thanksgiving days uh, that the Canadians proclaimed during that era were highly religious, with uh, newspapers printing uh, Thanksgiving sermons of the day. You think maybe that they saw Thanksgiving or they heard about Thanksgiving in the United States, right? Yep. And they thought, hey, yep. this is cool. We Let me see. Uh, a day off. 1570. That's what happened. 1578. Uh, hello, we weren't even around by then. Uh, I didn't think you Get said 1578. Did you say 1578? Yes, I did, my dear. Okay. I guess I wasn't listening. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a surprise. <laughs> I hadn't thought about this before, but the Canadians just sat on their ass during the Civil War? 1578. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, not really. As you know, the Canadians, uh, they confederates uh, invaded vermont from canada oh yeah, yeah. that's another story for another time the canadians confided with the confederates yes they did wow it, first they sent indians after us then they sent confederates well you us. you know very well that, that during the war of 1812 that you know the americans invaded canada yeah oh, so yeah. they were trying to be opportunists yeah and apparently they had it coming and by <laughs> and, and by the way uh and by the way canada is is Compri comprised a lot of by a lot of Americans. They were mostly the loyalists that, uh, after the revolution, hightailed their ass into Canada, where it was still under uh, British rule mm -hmm. and French rule. Well, let me see. I don't know. French. Which, British. Okay. Quebec was French. Yeah. But that was uh, not forever, as you know. So, anyways, that's the uh, the little story on 
Canadian Thanksgiving. Actually, you can't trust anybody. If you say so. First, the French helped us, then they fought against us. The Canadians sat. Hello, they they're French. What do you want? <laughs> Excuse me? They're French. I mean, what? ask the British about the French. They'll really? tell you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm Canadian French. But <laughs> Good for you. But yeah, you guys sent the Indians after us. Uh, well, yeah, we're part Native Americans. French, so. <laughs> French go whatever the wind blows. That's, that's uh, pretty yeah. much it, you know. Yeah, big surprise. You know. Don't uh, we all? <laughs> anyway. So, and of course, today is is uh, Happy Christopher Columbus Day. So, uh, and despite uh, re revisionist history, uh, we have decided to bring out the facts about Christopher Columbus. And uh, okay, so where do you fall on this Christopher Columbus thing now? I, uh, what do you mean? What do I fall on this? I'm just bringing out the facts. You, I mean, is there a problem with facts, Lou? No, I do just, you have a problem with your facts? comment didn't reveal which side of this issue that I just says on. despite the revisions history, there is a decision uh that I would decide to bring out the facts about Christopher Columbus. Who was Christopher Columbus and what the hell happened? So this is what's gonna happen. I told you you wouldn't like the show. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> I don't remember you telling me that, first of all. But... Yeah. All right, so tell me the facts on Christopher Columbus. So you want to know the facts of Christopher yes. Columbus? Oh, please, the please real do. facts. The yes. real facts. Okay. So Christopher Columbus was an Italian-born explorer who sailed in August 1492, bound for Asia, with the backing of the Spanish government. Aboard the ships, the Nita, the Pina, and the Santa Maria. Right. I love that. I used to learn that in high school. Uh, Columbus intended to chart the western sea route to China, India and the fabled gold and spices of the Asian island, the islands of Asia. Instead, in October 12, 1492, he landed in the Bahamas. Well, be landed would be optimistic. <laughs> Basically crashed into the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> He's a freaking explorer, Lou. Do you know what a freaking explorer is? Do you have any even clue? I know, but he didn't find it and land there. He, he ran land aground. into it. He, he tripped ran, over it. He tripped over it. Basically, <laughs> yes. Yes. Columbus uh, intended to chart the western. Yeah, I already did that. Uh, he, he landed in the Bahamas in, in uh, 1492, becoming the first European to explore the Americas since the Vikings established colonies in Greenland and Newfoundland in the 10th century. Except he died not knowing he was in the Americas. Will you listen to the okay. freaking story sure. before you make your revisionist comments? Are you getting this off Wikipedia? No, it is, is it? not. It's from a, it's from the history. Is it some Italian website? Yeah. This, is, this is from the history. <laughs> it's Google that must be real. It's embarrassing that us Italians attached to Columbus the way we do. Later in October, uh, Columbus cited Cuba and believed it was mainland China. In <laughs> December, an expedition found Hispanola, which he thought might be Japan. There he established the first uh, Understandable first colony in America with 39 men, a uh, Spanish colony. In uh, March 18, uh, 1493, um, Columbus returned to Spain in triumph, bearing gold, spices, and uh, Indian captives. The explorer crossed the Atlantic several more times before his death in 1506. It wasn't until his third journey that Columbus realized that he hadn't reached Asia, Asia at all, but had stumbled upon a continent previously unknown to Europeans. So there is the facts about Mr. Columbus and why he did it, but there's more. So uh, slide this down a little bit. The first Columbus Day celebration was took place in 1792 when New York Col Columbian Otter, better known as Tannamy Hall, uh, held an uh, event commemorating the landing's uh, 300th anniversary. Uh, taking pride in Columbus's birthplace, faith, Italian and Catholic. Uh, so yeah, okay, that's why they did it. So they held uh, ceremonies and parades in his honor. In 1892, uh, President Benjamin Harris, Harris, Harrison issued a proclamation encouraging Americans to mock the 400th anniversary of Columbus Voyage with patriotic festivals, writings, and on that day, the people, so as far as possible, will cease from toil and devote themselves to such exercises to it that express honor to those who discovered and an appreciation of the achievements of the four completed centuries of American life. So 
there's the story of how Columbus all happened. Oh, well, thank you, you know, for the history. That's good. I haven't had a history lesson in, mm -hmm. in quite a while. So there you go. So whatever happened to Columbus? Oh, I think you're going to tell us. He was taken back in disgrace to Spain, <clears throat> wasn't he? After they found out what he was doing in Hispaniola. Well, he died. But do you know he traveled father dead after he been alive <laughs> probably knew better where waiting. he was too <laughs> exactly yeah. i was waiting for something uh, a little mystical and paranormal to be thrown in here columbus may be uh, may have arguably traveled more in death than he had in life he died in 1506 in spain he was buried in oh god vala toilet his remains were then moved to a monastery in seville in 1570 1542. He was then moved again to Santi Domingo Hispanola. So we came over. Uh, when the French took control of uh, Hispanola, Columbus remains were then moved to Havana, Cuba. When Col the Cuba poor ran, man. When, My goodness. When Cuba became independent in 1898, Columbus, uh, okay, where am I Columbus was moved again, this time back to Seville. And at least it's assumed that when he moved back to Seville, his remains, uh, his remains still remain there. Jeez. Oh, Lord. There Talk are about some, weary bones. There, <laughs> there are some who are skeptical that in 1877, the Cathedral of Santi Domingo was undergoing repairs and work has found the tomb inscribed with uh, Columbus's, uh, Christopher Columbus on the uh, theory of that the bones were actually being constantly moved or that somebody else is actually Columbus's son. So that was the theory. So that's did a little traveling after death. Didn't <laughs> now I know why people have themselves cremated, right? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine picking up the bones, moving the bones all over yeah. the place? That's like, yeah. And you're not supposed to disturb people when they're resting, right? Why? It's freaking bones. Who gives a crap? Yeah, I'm dead. You, you can know. take my body. I mean, you know what? Well, I agree with that, but a lot of people hold it differently. You know, you don't want it to disturb a resting place. <laughs> Lincoln's postmortem was pretty active too. Yes, it he was. was all over the place. He was dug all right. over the place. Yeah, he was stolen, held for ransom. So, the more famous you are, the more you move. Did you know that uh, Christopher Columbus, on his his uh, trip to, also had some paranormal activity? Did he? Yes, he did. He's possessed by the devil. No. Tell us about that, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice, good setup. <laughs> uh, so let's find out what happened. All right. So Christopher Clumber and his small fleet of ships, the Nina de Pina de Santa Maria. I'd love seeing that. The Nina de Pina de Santa Maria. We're credited discovering the new world. Few people, however, are aware that a very strange events occurred during their voyage. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. These events are recorded in the ship's log. On the 11th of October, which is today, by the way. Oh, coincidence. In 1492. <laughs> so that's, I'm not even going to do the math. That's what old booze and food poisoning was do. <laughs> At approximately 10 p.m., Columbus and his crew were sailing across the deep, one of the deepest ravines in the Atlantic, almost four miles deep. And though uh, it is what is known today as the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, I was going to ask about that. But, mm. yeah. Pedro Gutierrez, I'm going to get the reception up here so you can correct me on this thing. <laughs> Pedro Gutierrez. After was, you danced with her this morning? I danced with it, yes. She can move too. Uh, was a crew member of the Santa Maria sailing with Columbus. He noticed strange lights shining out in the distance. He thought this was odd. Um, he thought it was, wait a minute, what he, what was so odd about the sighting, there you go, making it particularly intriguing is that the light was observed coming from the water. The fact is that it apparently appeared at least four times and was seen in a variety of positions, uh, rules out many logical explanations such as comets, meteor, bright planet, stars, yada, 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 yada. Wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. Uh, the initial sighting was allegedly followed by a great flash of green light Ooh. with a level of brilliance unlike anything these men had previously seen. The light is described as suddenly erupting in the sky, startling Columbus and his crew. The crews of the other two ships 
and the crews of the other two ships. The events occurred only five hours before Columbus and his men discovered the new world. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the light. Follow the light. When Columbus himself maintained the sh uh, Columbus himself maintained the ship's log. This rare and valuable handwritten document is today held in the Fordham University in New York uh, in the archives. So there you go. To the skull, Columbus describes the light as having an appearance of a flickering candle going up and down in the night. The light could not have uh, been caused by a cramp fire, campfire, <laughs> cramp fire, <laughs> God will oh bless us, <laughs> or land because it initially was dazzling and brilliant, and also to the fact that the land would not have been, uh, would have been well beyond the, the horizon and the position mm -hmm. of the ships, yada, 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 yada. Yep. So. See, now, very interesting. You guys ever watch on Netflix a show, I think it's on Hulu, too, called uh, Manifest? No. Oh, yeah. Have I, you seen that? I saw one season. Okay. So, you know, in that season? The first they, season. Right? How it's black lightning or whatever, that the plane disappears, mm -hmm. and then the, the tail fin, and then they show back almost in Columbus time. Do you remember that? Yes. Where the lights were flashing, and they were seeing it. They were actually on a boat. Right. So this Capsizing. is where they came from, I'm sure. <clears throat> no, no, but that's the prequel to Manifest. Well, no, I'm thinking they may have used some of this information to kind of work it into the story or the plot line of that story. Yeah, it's Manifest. also in, in uh, another one, the Bermuda Triangle is it? with Catherine Bell. It's, is in, that's another one that has the same similar thing in it. They but, canceled anyway. the show. I was bummed out and I liked it. Anyway, <laughs> so there's a story in Columbus, yaddy, 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 yaddy. So dead. what do we think it was? Don't know. UFO? They live in the water, you know. A time shift UFO. And we know when we discussed in the show earlier that uh, the Earth, of course, is hollow. And that's where the, that's right. Yeah. And Admiral Byrd put that in his official. The Earth uh, is hollow? Yeah, he flew his plane inside. Really? Mm -hmm. Admiral Byrd. I don't remember the plane part. Maybe I made that up. I don't that know. was in the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about that, you know, so about, you, could get to Santa. you know, global warming, by the way, uh, Antarctica has reported the last six months have been the coldest ever recorded. Yeah. Just yeah, I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Which? The global warming thing. Yeah, I kind of think that the timeline they started at, right? Maybe yep. it's just cyclical in the way it goes. And that's what we're running into. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's of course what it is. Plus, yeah. we're coming out of an ice age. Correct. So, yes, the earth is getting warmer. Well, you know, it's not dog farts and... SUVs. I think it's dog fights. I really do. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I can see the potential the power, but yeah. They, it depends they, on the dog. They say euthanize all dogs. No. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was driving up the coast yesterday. They made good eating. I'm looking at Star Island, right? If the just Why kidding. isn't Star just Island kidding. underwater? Right? Oh. That's because. Why? Because why? Because of ghosts. Because the ghosts go in the water. They don't want to go in the water. They just like to hold elevate the island. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I don't know. Who knows? This earth is constantly changing. And, and you, you know, you don't mess with Mother Nature. I mean, it is what it is. She's going to correct whatever she wants to correct. And we talked about this before, which we don't agree. So I won't go yeah, down that path. We can't <laughs> fix this with a tax. We can't. Fix climate with a tax, which is what the proposal tax. is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Do you know they're banning all s small motors in uh, California, including including uh, lawn mowers and chainsaws? Really? Yep. Excuse me. Say that again. They're banning all small motors in California, including lawn mowers and chainsaws. They want all electric cars and all electric uh, this stuff, and they can't produce any electricity. I was going to so. say, where are they getting this electricity? Where are you going to get the electricity? Don't they have brownouts out there already? They have what? Don't they have brownouts yeah, out there? They can't. There? They can't Power the state. How are they going to do it when they add a million? I, we can't build nuclear plants, though. Uh uh uh. We no. can't do that. What do you think you need to actually make the places to do the electricity? How do you, you need to create a plant to create even, you know, right. your electrical, you know, whatever you're doing. How are you going to do that with, if you can't use gas? William Schnapp. Burn coal. William Schnapp has got the best idea. Get the hell out of here. Go out in space. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Start all over again. Would you go at 90? Yeah, why not? I mean, I know it's, hey, at 90, it's a which, short trip. You might, yeah, sure. It may be the last trip, right? Yeah, does it matter? Yeah. You're freaking 90 years old. I'd go. What the hell difference does it make? What, are you going to die? Oh, my God. I might not live another two years. Nah. Seriously. I have you no can't desire. Live for, hello. You cannot live forever, everyone. You know what? 
You can't. Would That's you go? If Bezos came to, gave you a phone yes. call today, you'd go? Yes. Yeah. Not happy. Nah. Not Why me. Not? How about you, Lou? No. I, I'm not interested Why? at all. Because I've got... I don't like heights. <laughs> 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 and I can look on... Uh, if I want to see what it looks like, I can look through a telescope, right? But it's not even like <clears> space, <throat> right? It's just that... Yeah, sub it is. It's level. Yeah. And yeah, you know, not even... Go up for five minutes, then come down? Yeah. They were up so there three days can't... last time. Were they? Yes. Three days? Well, yeah. Yes. The toilet wasn't working either. That, no, was a big well, that sounds like a pleasant three <laughs> days to me. <laughs> they fixed it. Don't worry. Uh -huh. See, that's American ingenuity. They can go, well, whatever country it was, ingenuity. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Jeez, what did that yeah. house call cost? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm good. Probably brought the guy in from the International Space Station <laughs> or the Chinese Space Station who have their own space station. I'll keep my feet they planted do? on the they ground. Have a space station up there? Yeah. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. Not God. keeping up with the Chinese space program. Man, Lou, you're behind the times. Yeah. Mm. Get with it. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, when did that go up? A long time ago. Oh, okay. We talked about it on the show, in fact, about yeah. how they're firing tacky and rays at the <laughs> thing. Oh. They're heating up the planet. Probably. Exactly. Oh, like the Chinese aren't heating up the planet. If anybody's heating up the planet, it's the freaking Chinese. You know how many Chinese are? That's a lot of farts to start with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I but, can see you're going to get all kinds of yeah, uh, fan yeah, mail whatever. from this one. But, <laughs> no, seriously, they're pollution. They have worse pollution well, controls course. than we do. So, you know, I mean, yeah. they have entire cities that, like, get totally smogged in from uh, temperature inversions and stuff. It's ridiculous where yeah. they built these cities in, inside them valleys and next to the yeah. It's well, pollution and man-made global warming are two different arguments. They are? Yeah. Why are they? Because pollution can exist without changing the climate of the planet. It just... No. Like everything, every ecosystem can only hold so much. Every river, you can dump stuff in the river again. That's fine. It's not a problem. That's why we had no problems in the beginning. But every ecosystem can only take so much balance. of whatever. It need and balance. It needs a, exactly. It needs a balance to survive. So do you believe humans are heating up the planet? Do I believe? Yeah. We've got to be heating up the planet. Of course we are. I think they should I mean, stop cloud seeding. That might be helpful. But, I mean, what reasons and, and how we're doing is another story, you know. And and not only that, what are you going to do? Well, we could start a couple of nuclear wars. I mean, cut down the population and start all over again. I mean, we could yeah, do that. Let's not even go there because I have my own opinion on that. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you, you talked about the Ice Age and, and the periods, and, and that's what happens. I mean, you know. So it is what it is. I mean, the, that's a separate answer. <clears throat> yeah, it is. If you, the Earth is changed, so it it responds to whatever is thrown at it. So it reacts in certain ways. Uh, so our consumption of CO two is heating up the planet, in your opinion? I don't. Our consumption of CO two. Our production of CO two. If the CO two levels are increasing, then it, it, yeah. How can you not say that? That would be uh blind science if we if clt levels are increasing then you cannot say oh we're not increasing co2 i'm not asking if we're increasing co2 i mean i'm asking yes, if did. our increasing of co2 is warming up the planet i do not know that yeah i do not know that yeah i don't believe that that's, that's fine yeah since of course we're producing and, co2 and, you, and you you of course have a nature has a way several to do counter science, balance. right no okay you just have your lot logic in your common sense yes okay i believe that yeah so sometimes you have scientists with several degrees but they don't have logic and common sense so they just go strictly by data but they're, and they're unfortunately working on government grants and, and unfortunately data as we know uh is selective and you can make any data work for whatever you want for example yes yeah any data that shows you there's a rising trend in temperature mm -hmm. always starts after 1830 exactly mm -hmm. show me the chart that shows a rising trend in temperature that includes 1830 and then we'll talk yeah exactly. but we can't see the problem, the problem data the problem is lou and it is selective data but the problem is we don't have temperature readings before that from the planet wise correct so how can they be so solid and you know think that they have the right answer when you jump i'm know? not saying anyone has the right answer that's <clears throat> what they believe in and that's what they're going on and they make use the data that they have to mm -hmm. prove their point like and i just said that you can use data for anything correct right i just mentioned that the antarctica had, the last six months have been the coldest on re recorded on message on uh, record 
But once again, we haven't recorded it before then. So it, it's, it's all relative. That's the whole thing. So I'll be gone. I don't give a crap. <laughs> well, you know what Mark Twain said? There are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So anyways, we have actually a guest on the show, and I've ranted for oh, about a half hour now. So mm -hmm. That's okay. But anyways, uh, Maureen, thank you for joining us today. And uh, as you know, Maureen was my original co-host for Ghost Chronicles 100 years ago. So, yeah, feel, well, I shouldn't yeah. say that, but it does feel like a long time ago. It was right? a long time ago, right? And yeah. uh, she and I have written uh, three books together, Ghost Chronicles, more Ghost Chronicles and Ghosts Today. Right. And um, if you read any of the books, then you know that we've referred to the radio show several times in the books. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because that was a part of our life at that time. You know, so. Did a couple radio and that, shows, that actually. Was, that was before a uh, couple of radio shows. Toji. Toji. No, 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 no. The, uh, you, you just. <laughs> it just, doesn't like an answer. Go, that's fine. No, the the the, uh, the point I was making is that, um, and I was just going to discuss that, is that we were on terrestrial radio before podcast radio existed. Correct. Yeah. And uh, before the internet existed, I think. Well, no, um, no, not, not that. Much, to, 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 <laughs> not that, that yeah. old. Not that. Not quite. It was old. bad back then. I mean, for instance, if you went on the on the internet then, there was like twenty four ghost groups in the world, and I was like twenty four in any trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just kidding. Uh, yeah. You wonder why I get hate mail. Huh? I was just gonna yeah. say about fan mail. I don't, you I know? don't get it. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't get fan mail. We get hate mail. <laughs> You're not pissing somebody off. You're not doing it right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, it's, I've known you for, I mean, we, we've done a lot. And, and Maureen, of course, uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things, uh, you know, when I first got involved. And I said this trillion times. I actually think about bringing that up and just recording it so I don't have to keep saying it all the freaking day. <laughs> so anyways, they, oh, how'd you get into it? And I'm giving the whole story and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, I certainly didn't believe in a lot of things. And Maureen, uh, you know, taught me to... Uh, try to understand things and uh, yeah, I have. And I, now I know a lot more than I used to know. Absolutely. It's Which time is, has changed a lot. I'll tell you. What kind of student was he? Oh boy. Interesting. <laughs> oh, well, I was never. Listen, well, uh, you just said she I had you in my Dowson class. <laughs> you charged me for that too. I did because <laughs> you were a student. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember that when we were dowsing, right? Using the pendulum and you know, it's primarily a yes and no, maybe. Right, that you yep. get for a response. Right. So you show everybody what it does. So Ron, I'll never forget standing next to me one time. We're, I think we were in Middleton House. I know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm over there, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, let's do." So I start getting names of people, right? And he got so upset. And he looked at me. He's like, "How is that coming from that pendulum? It's a yes or no or maybe. What are you talking about? You can be getting a name. You look foolish. Come over here." You know. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound like Ron at all. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. And do you remember the time we went to that uh, those people's house? And it was around Halloween time, Maybe, I maybe think. this wasn't a good idea. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? It was Halloween time, right after yeah. Halloween. Yeah. And we were in the basement talking to this family who were having, you know, visitors, right, show up in their house. And they're like, I don't know why. We never had this problem before. And again, I'm dowsing, and I start getting information. I know it was early on because you got so concerned. So he's like, stop stop what you're doing he pulls me over on the side he's like stop saying that i said there's some there was a halloween party and the people that came to your halloween party brought you know guests right yep. what the hell house was this i don't, uh, I don't it was weird i can't remember where it was but you got so upset and so the people were looking going like, yeah and he's like how you're would you know memory oh how would you know this so how was this you know during this? the halloween party or after, no, no <laughs> after so we visited so they them. brought people and left them Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. So, but what was you know what, what that's like, Lou, right? Yes. <laughs> but what it was is tell you know talking to people and say it's okay. Just well, you know, these people are here. They don't mean harm. Blah blah blah. They're curious. They you know whatever. They like your energy. And Ron was getting so frustrated because he's pulling me over. He goes, "Do you know how foolish you look right now?" That's why I remember it being early on, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, "You can't be telling that to those people." And then when we went, I said, "Ron, just trust me." And the people looked at me and they said, "Yeah, we just had a Halloween party recently, and these people from the street came down." And, you know, now that we think about it, it started happening after we had that party. Oh. So, yeah. 
I wish I remember that house. I can't remember that I, house. It was a big white house, and we would down. I can't, but there's tons of them. Are there house. any signs if you get people <clears throat> following you around? Um, going to Halloween parties with you? Yeah. You know, I your food's going. <laughs> your food's and the going. liquor. And the liquor. And the liquor. You know, <laughs> that's where all my liquor goes. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because you just never know, right? And uh, Steve Wilson calls them taxi cab ghosts, right? Mm -hmm. They're when you're going somewhere and they like your energy and you, you know, you could potentially, if you're not, Oh, so aware. that's my problem. Huh? You pick them up. Yeah. Well, you got the post office on the other side, so they're yeah. you know. The Don't people, forget the paranormal posse. The paranormal posse, yes. exactly. April so. Sharon told me that. That's but, right. Uh, yeah. And you like that paranormal <laughs> posse? Well, it begins rhymes P and P. You know, paranormal posse. And I can yep. go for that. You got the double P. The double whammy. So I could be carrying <laughs> four or five people around now, and you could. You probably do. By the way, mm -hmm. yep. you probably do. We all have people that, I don't know if you want to call them guides or, or guardian angels, but, you know, we have uh, spirits that uh, kind of attach themselves to, I don't know, I don't want to say, I hate the word attachment because no. it's not really an attachment. Oh, you know, that's another story for another time. But mm -hmm. yeah. but to me, it's not what the true definition of attachment is. It's more that they're with you, uh, you know. Are they family members? Or oh, I'd be with you. And then are they family kind of members or spirits? It depends. Or? It depends. It doesn't it depends. have to. There's yeah. no guarantee on anything yeah. anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. We, I mean, there's no way you, I mean, there's no way we can actually prove it, you know? I mean, right. This is just what we believe and what, what our theories are. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really do. I think we all have these I'm people. I'm just wondering what a spirit's thinking when they follow somebody to a Halloween party. Say, hey, I'm hanging out here. Well, you know what? We had uh, a Just situation. wait till they fire you in the big room. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't even go there. Yeah, well, right. Well, that does yeah, happen. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think, like, for instance, we had one case of a man that was uh, at a bar brawl, at a bar, and it happened to be like a bar brawl going on, right? And then soon after, you don't remember that one either? Oh my what the God, hell are you Brian. coming up with these things? You sure it you was me? Yes, read your it books was. once in a while. Yeah, read your book. <laughs> well, and what it was is they started having the kids' toys moving in the house. They started having someone looking over them in the bed. I can't believe you don't remain the, remember this. Um, but anyway, it was we went there, and it was soon after he had been. We said we talked about will you have. I come these on and I'm Bob Roll. I don't know. In a bar brawl, and he Probably was like, I don't "Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, actually, that happened, and it happened about a month or two ago, and you know, now we're thinking about you it." Sure, is you didn't get it from a reading somewhere? No, 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 no. God, I can't believe you don't remember those. Ugh, anyway, are there times when you have an active spirit in the house, and it's only active with certain people in the house? It's possible. Well, yeah. you have to define, but. What active, what active is. is, yeah. Well, yeah. one person is saying they're having contact with mm -hmm. spirits. The other one's going, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, absolutely. That's, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, it goes back to the vibrational crap. Right. Well, yeah. the sensitivities. The other thing is. You yeah, know, but is inside sensitivity vibration, you're on the same le vibrating level as the spirit or well, whatever you connect. Correct. Yeah. But the person who's feeling it may, their vibration is, it's, it's yeah, like tuning it's, in with the radio tune, Yeah, exactly. That's a, right? always a great analogy. That's probably one of the best analogies, I think, if, if you believe in vibrational or frequency thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And somebody else may be more grounded to the point where they're, you know, they're just, you know, if you think about something weighted and heavy energy wise, like molecules are moving slow, that's what solid is, right? Yep. The tables. And so what happens is if someone else is in there and they're vibrating rapping? higher, that was me. Uh -huh. And they're vibrating <laughs> higher, on. right? Yeah. Then they're more apt to pick up on they something than someone else will be. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and you know, on that note, can I mention something? You can mention anything. I started noticing, and it's kind of sad actually i'm losing my hair yeah i know it's sad. no <laughs> no that they're with everything going on okay with riots and the negative energy and the hate and that's know? just in the show no but i'm saying <laughs> things that are going on in our time right now right yep. people who these kids are in school who are empathic okay it's very very difficult for them and i will tell you that i know numerous people that have come to me because their children are going into depressions, having a lot of uh, psychological problems. They yeah. can't face like the emotions. And a lot of it is because they're super sensitive and they're going into these, picking up this energy from, you know, that's heavy. Right. And they're experiencing and they don't know what to do with these emotions. You know, they don't know yep. how to ground it out. They don't know how to 
diff, you know, distance themselves from what they're feeling. And they go into a room, even now they're back in school with these kids. You think about it, all these kids are so stressed out, their energy is heavy. So if someone's super sensitive, they're wearing it like a cloak and now they don't know what to do. So it's really a, a sad time. I'm looking at a lot of people. Oh, it's a sad time anyway. <laughs> no, but when you're sensitive and you're picking up and you, you know, I'm telling you that I've known numerous people that are suicidal because of it. And that's yeah. what really troubles me. Mm -hmm. I always, I always tell Jen, I says, you know, if there is another an Armageddon or, or yeah. end times, it's coming now. Yeah. Because this place is a freaking mess. Well, uh, did you know? And we did it to ourselves, no offense. Yeah. Fun well, funny that you bring that up, but that was, there's some books that I had been listening to on Audible, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and is, I thought that the writer was recent, like, because that's how much he was accurate in the statements that were taking place. And it was, this person was in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. But what he talked about, you think about um, Armageddon, his thing is saying, listen, it's almost like eth like the earth is cleansing, right? The universe. So, hey, you got a chance. You make all these choices. If you make poor ones, there's more chaos. There's more anger. There's more frustration. Negativity. And negativity. And now what you're doing is eventually you, the earth gets cleaned off and destroyed. And so it can start brand new again. And it's, it's, again, you have choice. To they make did it, it to the dinosaurs. We're next. It's true. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's what the theory is, is that it's almost as if you have your chance to make good choices. And if you choose poor choices, you now go down that path where destruction takes place, right? So that you can then start anew, which is really scary right now when you have grandkids and you're looking at these kids thinking, what is their future? But then I hear my mother in my head, right? And my father thinking they said the same thing. No. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you know? Well, do you feel I, sometimes I feel it's like the 80 20 rule? I mean, all this division and uh, hostility and uh, all everything that we're dealing with here is about the amplification through the media of the 20 percent oh, on God, either side. Media. Right. There are 80 percent of us in the middle who are just trying to put food on the table, keep a roof over our heads. The two exactly. things, what, what the the two things that are destroying this country are the media and, and the Internet. The yeah. two things, absolutely two oh, things. Oh, the internet amplifies no. right. the messages. Right? Yeah. And the, the media is just as bad. I mean, you you, you put on a, a, a news station, for instance, just a news station, oh, and you it. listen to each of the podcasts and each of the news stations, and you see how each one of them slants it yeah. to whatever their particular agenda is. It's 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 brutal. Uh, but it and, picks out stuff. And, and we see it all the time. It's in our face. And all this we, division and, and, we, and, and if we like it or happen to agree with something, this is the point of view we take, and that's what it, I mean. And and there is no, you say the the twenty eighty, but it's unfortunately the twenty that's that's dictating right. our world for the eighty, right? You know, the real, you know, and this is in every country. This is you know in Russia. This is in China. This is in Iran. This is in you know the ordinary people there. They don't really want to have anything. I mean, they have no hatred to other people. They have no. Uh, you know, agenda really, other than to do go along with their lives and take care of their family mm -hmm. and, and their fellow man and right. their fellow man, which is yep. true. And but it's that top enchilant that dictates everything for us that that's causing this freaking mess we're in. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, uh, because of the times that we're in and, and the difficulties, they look for an escape goat for their problems and they. Pick on something else. Well, so, unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of opportunists too, right? Of course, so it is. trying to take advantage oh, yeah. of situations. Just look at the number of scammers. You want to talk about opportunists? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. On on anybody's misery, they'll do it. It's like little. I, uh, it's a sad world, but it could be better if we all just treated ourselves better. And and by the way, I ha I have compiled a list of all the uh, most useless politicians in Washington, and I'm going to give it to you right now, all of them. They are all absolutely oh, yeah. useless. If we were smart, we'd I'll throw the whole freaking bunch of them out and start all over again. We'd abolish political parties. That would be my goal and just vote for people instead of parties. So anyway, then we might get some work done. <laughs> all right. I didn't get off in the political route, but I did. Okay. So, Mommy, you've also penned a couple of other books too, right? I have. Yep. There's, what What is uh... that? They were a um, youth, like a paranormal, young paranormal and above. So for <laughs> young kids, so we say 12 and up, right? Mm -hmm. But what's comical is um, 
my daughter-in-law read it and she's like, oh my God, I was terrified. I'm thinking, I'm <laughs> saying it's 12 and up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's in her well, 30s. Oh, <laughs> you know, so, um, but yeah, so it's under, I wrote them with uh, my girlfriend. So BT Lord is her, you know, the pen name and mine is JS Stevens. So for my son, Joshua, my daughter, Sabrina, and my husband, Steven. So that was, oh. yeah. So that was kind of where I pulled okay. that name. Oh, what's the name of the stupid uh, books? Monster of, <laughs> hey, Monster of the, it's the Ghost Seekers series. So Monster of the Asylum is the first one, which by the way, is if anybody does a search for Betty Comerford out there, right? They'll find on Facebook, I think I even just shared it, that we have like several chapters of the first book for free for people to download. So if you go out on Facebook, um, actually, if you look under mine as well, Maureen Wood, you'll see that there is a free download. I think Ooh. I shared it and posted it. So it's amongst a whole bunch of books, which is really cool because you can download all of these indie writer books. Can't say they're all, you know, how they're written, but you can be the judge. So are these spirits them. based on things you've encountered or are they fictitious? Well, it's a combination. So it's their fiction, but a lot of them are my experiences that are weaved in. So, you know, seances that took place and invest paranormal do investigations. Uh, not anymore, but I did when I was 16 till I was nine, uh, 18, maybe, or 15 to 18. So, hmm. And I still do them occasionally. I wonder why. Ron changed the name to one night we were at the, the Houghton Mansion and he brings a candelabra, right? And he's like, oh, well, I know you don't like doing seances, but we're going to do a seated, what did you say? A seated communication by candlelight. I'm like, uh, <laughs> hello, Ron. Isn't that the same thing? No, it really, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the seance uh, and it was very, we got a lot of uh reaction and response from the other side on that <laughs> from the on. people there too <laughs> <laughs> the people there. Yeah. yeah nick jumping up on the other seat. side <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah that's a, actually it's in our first book i believe ghost chronicles yeah, yep. you can read about it in the, in the books ghost chronicles if you haven't read them are accurate accounts of our investigations of how we even what we talk to each other, what we were thinking and, and everything else, it's it's all in there like you're right there with us and nothing's made up. We went back and exhaustedly looked through all the yes, tapes. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. And looked at the Almost videos. Almost each other over it. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't, I know it's funny because I do not like seeing myself on video. I don't like watching, especially after an investigation. Yes, you don't like working with me in the books. No, it's not that. I just don't like After our second book, she said, like, I'll never write another freaking book with you again. <laughs> Well, I was wondering what that experience was like. <laughs> That was before uh, I'm next I needed book. a break. I needed a break. <laughs> it, it was it was trying because we both were perfectionists on what we wanted to write. Well, well yeah. we both you wanted to have you're freaking anal. That's your problem. I know. <laughs> I, I will because I was typing it right. Ron sitting I couldn't next even to me. type it. Work. I'm gonna type it, which I'm, is good because I can't type anyway. So. I'm over there <laughs> typing it and no joke, right? So I have a I have a to I will say I'm anal retentive. So I have an issue with if I have to fix something, it's easy for me because I type oh, drive me nuts. to oh. backspace and delete the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and write and write it again Just, because I type faster than it would be to go in, click yeah. on it, correct it, right? right? And this one over here, like, oh my God, do you have to do that every single time? I'm like, uh, do, 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 why are you paying do, attention do, do. to what she's typing? Because I got nothing else to do. I'm looking at her. I'm sitting there just looking at her. What am I going to do? Well, you know, we had a lot of interesting moments, right? We did. With the and my house, I had yeah, uh, mom. my mom was oh, there. God, she'd come it? in. She'd come visit us almost every day, right? We'd be writing and she'd come peek into the room and she's standing over our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and the weirdest thing, Lou, is that when we wrote the, the third book, More Ghost Chronicles, we were in there writing again. And I swear, I get, oh, man, I got chills now. I swear your mom came in. It was like so bizarre. It was like it was deja vu all over again. Yeah. There was, of course, nobody there. But right. it, it was oh, like, absolutely. oh, so bizarre. And I think when we, well, because we wrote it, too, my mother, um, I was telling Ron, right? That, that's why that's we me. included yeah. it. No. But my mother was very terrified for me for her she had abilities but she working said with she ron would, she was terrified for you no Probably, with, you? The <laughs> with the paranormal yeah so she would be proud but terrified right so she wanted to watch the videos so i want to say it was the one for connecticut was the one we watching the what's the name of that lighthouse new london ledge london yeah new london ledge right so 
And what had happened before we included it, before my mother passed, she'd been wanting to watch this. And I kept saying, oh, I don't have it. Oh, I don't have it yet, right? Because it doesn't look good for me. It's like, I look like, you know, a little crazy. So yeah. anyway. The typical trans channel. <laughs> trans channel. Deep channel. channel so yeah. nobody was in the house. And I was, it was months that I had this, you know, DVD. And I finally said, okay, I'm going to watch it because nobody's around, yeah. right? Nobody's here. And I will watch it. So I sat down because one's like, how could you talk about it if you haven't watched it? Right. So I said, fine. So I put it on and I'm watching it. My mother shows up. So my mother's like, oh, I'm so excited. You're watching. I'm like, yay. Right. So she <laughs> she came over and she sat next to me. And I'm like, you sure you want to watch this, mom? I do. I want to watch it. She watched it. And all she did was she put her hand on my lap and she squeezed. Right. And she looked at the. Um, then she turned to me. She said, I'm terrified for you. Yeah. And so the poor woman. So then we were writing about it. Yep. Is when Ron was, I think, was feeling her there as well. Yep. You know, because she really was. In. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, we do have a comment. And uh, this gas house gorillas. I like it. That's my buddy, Bruce. Yeah. Is it? Yep. And. Bruce, have you read the book? I mean, evidently you have, because it says, have you ever had a spirit in the car with you while driving? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. got to tell a stone, Stonehenge story. Stonehenge, yeah. 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 Go ahead, Ron. No, that's yours. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, dear. I'm just a Ron invited me to to uh, go to, and I think and Leo was with us at the time, right? It was the, uh, yeah, it was Stonehenge. for the radio show. Leo, yeah. yeah. We did the radio show. We went to, and it was during the, you, you oh, know. You know, you, it was for, um, it was for the, the, uh, the one we did for. Uh, podcast. Yeah. We, no, it wasn't a podcast. It was for, um, what the hell is that? Uh, Ghost Village. Ghost Village. Jeff Belanger's site. We used to do a, a series for him mm -hmm. on, uh, yeah. Yeah. We created a podcast. Like, was it a podcast at yeah. that time? Yeah. Okay. We did a podcast, but we did a, the audio, right? So that was before Toji, too. Yeah. It was, yeah. and it was daytime. So for anybody out there who thinks that just because yeah. it's daytime, there's no spirits, you know, think mm. again. So when we went we went to uh, Stonehenge, we get there, and as we're walking through- This I is would, America's you know, Stonehenge. America's Stonehenge in, in Salem, New Hampshire. Salem, New Hampshire. And going there, Ron's like, oh, yeah, we'll just see what we get. And all of a sudden, I start feeling this spirit of a Native American, and I'm thinking there's this- sacrificial table and i'd never been there i'm like we go around the corner i think it's right there so we go around the corner and there's this sacrificial table so we do all this it's like stuff. an ancient village it's right? an, yeah it's an yeah. ancient village it's very it's it's a very uh interesting place it's, it that it's way. a hodgepodge yeah. yeah there's a little of everything right so they, they rebuilt it the, the way they thought it was but it's yeah i don't know how accurate it is but anyway go ahead carry but, on. so um we decide anyway we're recording we do this little show we get back we get in the cars right we're driving, we go, I think we dropped off Leo. Leo yeah, we get rid of Leo. Get rid of Leo, we dropped off Leo. And so Juan had had the EMF meter right in your pocket. Did you have it in your pocket? I did. And so as we're leaving, I'm like, oh my God, Ron, I feel someone here. He's in the car, right? I, and I'm <laughs> driving my Audi, right? So Ron's like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. We're on our way to the show actually too, weren't we? No, we were on our yeah, way we to were. the show. Yes, we were on our so, way to the show. I'm saying, I feel someone in the back seat. He's here, right? Or he's here. Ron's like, oh, come on. All of a sudden, the EMF meter starts blaring. Oh, God. So we were going under, you know, some wires. Ron's like, oh, it's got to be because we're going under the wires. So we get on 28. We're driving further down, and the meter is still going nuts, so much so that it melted, right? Like when he opened it up, the wires had melted. Well, I pulled it out, first of all, and, and right. it wasn't on. Right. But it was going it off. Was it was off. going off, but it wasn't yeah, on. It wasn't right. on. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't turned on. So it was interesting. So now Ron takes his sage, right? The liquid sage. And, uh, 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 okay, well, I missed something. Oh, he's like. Van Helsing special blend. Oh, Van it's Helsing. not liquid oh, sage. Sorry. Excuse me. It's a combination. Yes. Um, wow. So what happened was he's looking at me. He's like, can you drive if you're channeling a spirit? I know, I'm that like, one always crack me. I'm like, like, I don't know. We'll find out, is, right? I know. <laughs> he's some, seen some pretty intense channeling. I wouldn't want you driving either while you're channeling. Uh, exactly. I, I was in the feeling, passenger seat. Exactly. Remember that yeah. I wasn't feeling too One hand on the door out the way. <laughs> so we decide we better pull over, right? So we pull over at Wendy's. Was it Wendy's? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I mean, you, you really jumped over I that did. whole I thing. Did. Go yeah, ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. So, yeah. So, we, uh, anyway, she said, you know, it's very, she's like, oh, he's trying to. So I said, I got my special blend. And then she said, he, he's in the, is it, he's gone. I said, oh, yeah. yeah that's she right. said, he's gone. Well, he's in the back seat. So, <laughs> so I had the special blend. So I said, huh, <laughs> stuff's okay. Yep. 
So yeah, continue. So, so then we decide we're going to pull over at Wendy's parking lot, right? Before we go to the show, because it's a little hairy. He was in and the we had a hitchhiker. And we had a hitchhiker, right? So it's like getting a bee out of the car. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we opened all the doors and there's Ron spraying down my Audi's leather seats, right? With his special blood. And I'm like, you know, there's something wrong though. about this, right? And yeah. I said, people in Wendy's are like, what? the heck are these people doing out here imagine? Yeah. <laughs> so it was but yeah we were on our way here yeah um, but you also had uh you know talking about spirits and cars what's that did he leave oh yeah yes he okay. left i had special blend <laughs> oh, <that day>. seriously <laughs> it Sorry. worked no and else special blend which you can get uh at uh, positively <laughs> brilliant and also circles of wisdom <laughs> but uh yeah of course it worked uh but you had another time too and and this was on a personal level uh, Maureen also had a, a spirit in her car, and uh, I don't know if you remember this with the time you were driving in, in the near accident. Oh, God, please don't let me tell you this, <laughs> your story. So say it, and then I'll... Your father? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Um, well, that was a long time ago, because it happened when it my son... It doesn't matter, we're talking no, about No, 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 but I car. didn't think yeah. about it, because yeah. my son was 10 months old, right? Yeah. And yeah. he's going to be 35 in December, so... My brain just didn't go there. But let me tell your age. But thanks. <laughs> um, but what happened was so you had him when you were 10, huh? My dad, my dad always wanted boys, right? Yep. The poor man. My mother took in foster children, my father took them in, and it was always girls, right? We could have 14 people at a table, <laughs> and it was 14 girls, my poor dad, right? Yep. So when we started having children, he kept saying, I just want a boy, right? So I had my daughter. So he's like, Oh yeah. And you know, he was happy, but <laughs> yeah. he wanted a boy. Yeah. So then I get pregnant with my son and my father passes when he was three months old. Yeah. So that was kind of the connection of, oh, he's like, I know he's always protecting my son. It's like his angel on his shoulder, right? Right. So one day I'm driving, I have, you know, and back then they weren't smart enough to say, put the, you know, the seat for the baby, you know, put it in the back. But right. no, I had it in the passenger seat in the front of the car. Yeah, we survived. But, yeah, but we survived. survived. Yeah. Um, but so I'm driving down. I think it's Little Island Pond Road um, up in New Hampshire, right? Coming down, it's all windy, coming oh, near, yeah. the, near the water. And actually, as I'm driving, I look, and it felt like everything slowed down, right? And I see this huge Mack truck coming the other way. And at the same time, there's this house that's like kind of her driveway's on a hill. And her car, this car's backing out. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, she just didn't see me yet, right? As soon as she sees me. Right. She'll stop, right? So as I'm going, now the Mack truck is like really hitting on the horn. And I happened to catch the reflection in my rear view mirror. My father was sitting in the back seat who had been passed for the three, you know, for months because my son was 10 months old, right? Wow. Yeah. So, but what happened was so strange is it happened all at once. Next thing I know, I don't even know how I got past where this accident was. The car came down and hit the Mack truck and I was already past it. Yeah. And I was living beside myself because I'm thinking, oh, my God, my dad's in my back seat. He evidently was protecting us because of this. And I turned around. There was nobody in the car. She had left her. Th the brake wasn't on. And the car was rolling down the driveway and uh, hit the truck. Wow. So it just, I somehow went right past it. So I know that he was the angel on our shoulder that day and protected my son because he's in the passenger seat. He would have got the car right in there. What's what's a day to what's day to day for someone like you who's so sensitive to these things? Day to day, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's always people in the grocery store. Or what do you? No, no, not necessarily. Sometimes, I mean, when I was working certain jobs at, um, you know, years ago, I worked doing teaching and training these engineers, and there was occasions I would have spirits show up in class while I'm standing there you know, teaching people. And I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> and mind you, as I'm talking about these components, right, there was something we used to call ghosting. So some of the guys knew at the time what I did. And so at, they would make jokes every time because I'd say, you know, when you see yeah. ghosting and they're like, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it was, uh, it was interesting. You know, it's, it, you never know. It's never a dull moment, moment, put it that way. You have to develop an ability to kind of take your antenna down, right? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But then you, you know, I think what happens is, especially now with COVID, right? You don't go a lot in public mm -hmm. or you haven't been for a while. When you do, uh, it makes it very interesting. So I think you almost have, I think I've um, started to learn even that's helped me to kind of protect myself better when I go out in public. The other thing I think, and this is my own thoughts on, the, on this too, is that a lot of it has to do with yourself as well. If mm -hmm. you are, really a really positive person and everything else 
all this darker energy or this negativity doesn't invade you as much. Right. I mean, you know, even how strong it is, mm -hmm. your, your, your light, if you want to call it whatever, right. your, your force field actually deflects it uh, or if it penetrates it, it's, it takes a lot to get through. So you've got that protection. So that's why it's, it's so important to have a positive attitude at all times. And if you, you know, it, it, love it, is everything. the, here's the thing to me. Yeah. You fill your heart with love, right? Love mm -hmm. is the highest vibration. So if you have those moments and you need to, to quickly adjust, let's say, you know, we're all human. So you mm. get those moments where you feel the weight of all this negativity. So the way to transmute that or trans, you know, change it is to, you know, how many times you have a picture of a memory that you had that just makes you smile, right? Yeah. And fills you up. That's what you want. So we have all our phones. We have the ability to t look at that picture. Mm. And by the way, photos hold energy. You know, they hold that energy of the moment. So that's what helps you to kind of raise that vibration um, and I think that's one way, like Ron said, when you feel that inside and you're strong inside, the I think of it, um, I started doing a lot, I do a lot of reading, I'm always learning, everybody should be, right? And it's kind of thought of as a pendulum. So mm -hmm. you think about uh, what goes on, it's kind of a pendulum and the negativity it loves to hook into you. So if you're full of, you don't give it energy by focusing on watching the news and getting wrapped up in every little negative moment, right. you're not getting hooked into the drama it's it doesn't it's almost like it's not attached to you it's not you're not helping me out here to add to this negativity so i'm going to go look for someone else right and, and the important thing too is not to let it get through to you i mean i watch the news all right and i watch it because i want to be informed mm -hmm. all right yep. but i don't really let it get to me like you know yep. jana jana's very political you know whatever everything she's like shows and it's like i don't really want to hear about it i don't care you know there are certain things that I can control. Mm -hmm. And if there are things that I can't control, why am I even wasting energy on it? Right. You know, exactly. it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, you don't have to confront everything. No, you don't. Yeah. I mean, you can change certain things you can't. You 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 do what you can when you can. The other thing is is uh, and this is my theory all the time, once again, but I believe it so much that when you go at the end of the night, take a freaking shower. It just washes mm -hmm. all that crap off of you as well. Uh, I don't know who does not take a shower and not feel relaxed and, and chilled, right? I mean, you, you always told me you do your best thinking in a shower, right? I think a lot and of people do. I do my best singing, actually. <laughs> well, you know, you make a good point, though. And one thing I would recommend people is if that's a way of grounding, right? Because you get rid of all that gunk. Imagine it's red just coming off you, like your yeah. chest, your face. Like I like black. I think black's better. No. Well, you lower the black. noise floor. You're not connected to anything. You're just with yourself and your yeah. own thoughts. And, right. you know, you can keep the negative. It's easy to keep the negativity out. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. you know, people, there's people out there that buy grounding mats. Think of it this way. Years ago, and this is just a tip, right? So years ago, say Native Americans, they'd use natural leather on their feet, right? And they would still connect to the earth. Because that's so, all they had, so, by the way. Well, it's all they had, but people and all, By actually, the way, Europeans also did the leather too? I'm just saying. No, no, I don't mean it that way. What I'm saying is it's natural, right? Yeah. But if you look at the soles you shoes now, it's rubber. It's, right. you know, True. so you miss connection between the earth and grounding. Yeah, so fair, fair what enough. people do is there are people now that either buy sh certain shoes. So that helps them. To or you can go barefoot in the house. You can go barefoot, but you can go barefoot outside. It's hard in the wintertime, right? House you is go grounded barefoot, to the earth. And people will actually buy what they call a grounding mat so that they can stand on it for so long a day. And supposedly, right. I haven't done it myself as far as getting tests done, but supposedly it helps to reduce inflammation in your body that if you take the pictures and x-rays or CAT scans after you stand on a grounding mat for so many minutes, you can see the difference of the inflammation in one in your body get reduced by doing that. You know, there's a Red Sox player practicing grounding. Hmm. Oh, and really? Took several players around. He goes out before the game barefoot and sits in the outfield grass and mm -hmm. just he basically grounds. That's and perfect. Several mm -hmm. other players have picked up on it. Yeah, I, I, I could drink ground coffee. Ground no. coffee. Yeah, yeah. It works too. But chocolate, chocolate actually for great chocolate for grounding. grounding. For all you people, chocolate. I won't eat chocolate. That's the end of the before. show. That's the end of the show. Are you wow. serious? Yeah. Damn. Man, wow! Thank you for having me on, guys. I no, miss you. Good to see you. Uh, you know, we want to thank everybody for listening. We want to wish our good friends in Canada. Uh, <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving! Good night. And God bless. Good night. And God bless.
From goalies to ghosties, long-leggedy beasties, and things that go bump in the night. Deliver us, good Lord.